Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're talking about technical progressive metal band Torrential Downpour and their much awaited fourth album, 202020. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. From Haworth, New Jersey, this band fuses elements of prog, post-rock, gent, electronic noise, and ambience in a similar vein to bands like Car Bomb. I first caught wind of these guys with their 2014 album, Truth, Knowledge, Vision, which to this day remains as one of maybe a handful of perfect tens I've given on the site, and ultimately wound up on my list of the top 100 metal albums of the past decade. Since then, I've been checking in year after year, hoping for a follow-up, and I must say that the wait was well worth it. Torrential Downpour kicked things off on a seriously high note with the eight and a half minute Apperceptive Mass. This track wastes no time getting into high gear with the opening you heard in the intro, building into a series of Meshuggah riffs and laser beam sounding effects that again give Car Bomb and Frontier a serious run for their money. <laughs> But that's just getting things started on this absolute odyssey of a track. Just two minutes in and we get our first major transition with a chuggy start-stop riff, complemented by spooky synths and a bass rumble that sounds like it could shake a subwoofer to pieces. This leading into even more truly maniacal vocals, the delivery up there with my favorite Mike Patton moments from his brief stint with the Dillinger Escape Plan and work on the Tomahawk albums. The weird digitized effects during this part even recall the weird gas mask CB radio vocals or that scene in The Matrix where the metallic liquid shoots down Keanu's throat. <laughs> And the build only continues up and up, this seemingly endless climb with more and more vicious territory. Every time you think things can't get any more heated, the furnace only cranks it up another notch until the boiler finally bursts in an epic crescendo around the three minute mark. <laughs> And after a bit of a cooldown, we finally see the more subdued side of Torrential Downpour, the one more interested in jazz and classical sounds with a lengthy piano interlude straight out of later career Dillinger Escape Plan. And by the way, this comes to you courtesy of one Jordan Rudess, who you may know best from a little band called Dream Theater. This finally leading into the big finish, a combination of plotting, doomy guitar chugs, freeform solos, pounding drums, and more of that atmosphere building synth. It truly is a wonder making it through from start to finish. And mind you, that's just the first song. We've still got four more bangers and the mayhem has just begun. Insufferable keeps the Dream Theater vibes going with a super proggy bass intro that already had me at full attention just seconds in. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. From here, Torrential Downpour once more engage their usual extreme take on math core gymnastics, guiding us through a number of ups and downs from blissful and ethereal post-metal atmosphere to harrowing daughters-esque guitars that sound like they shouldn't be able to be produced by any normal instrument. <laughs> Seriously, not since you won't get what you want have I heard tones that so deeply raised my internal anxiety. More great vocals around this point as well, including what has to be the blech to end all blechs and an attitude trip of a guitar hook that gave me some serious stank face. I felt my lips curling down at the edges and caveman brain kicking in as if by reflex. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
The Primal Wound is another head spinner of a track with lots to cover in its nearly seven minute runtime. This one opens with more strange guitars that I can only describe as like hovering flying saucers that are spinning and they're definitely not here to make friends. The closest comparison I could muster was Geigen and the more I re-listen to this one, the more I stand by that. <laughs> More great moments for the bass guitar on this one as well. First, early on with a nice little groove building into some clean singing and piano. Then later on, a more aggressive kind of minimalist start-stop riff whose genty tones build into the appropriately Meshuggah-esque closing moments. And sandwiched between these is another unforgettable vocal moment, once more drawing comparisons to Mike Patton, but this time his more violent staccato ramblings with Phantomas or his Sepultura feature. In any case, this is pure unbridled madness. <laughs> This style bleeds a bit into the early moments of Old Familiar as well with more chaotic shrieking alongside yet more driving bass and pounding toms that make the drummer seem intent on pummeling his kit to pieces. There's also some more experimental sounding guitars and effects on this one, crafting eerie backing soundscapes and then coming to the forefront at a bizarre midsection. Even with all I've said up to this point, I feel comfortable in saying that this perhaps is the weirdest track on the album. And then we get another proggy adventure to close things out with Incognito. This track has a seriously epic build over the first two and a half minutes or so that had me smiling from ear to ear with its bouncy energy. Something about it is just so damn satisfying, and despite spending its majority as an instrumental, Incognito doesn't sound in any way inferior to the other tracks on the album. In fact, it expresses more in its instrumentation than any additional vocals probably ever could. It's the perfect conclusion to this amazing ride of a record. So once more, while nearly six years is a long time to wait for a follow-up, especially one only just over 30 minutes in length, it again highlights my mantra of quality over quantity. While even many of my favorite bands tend to be a little hit and miss locked into the traditional two-year album cycles, Torrential Downpour seem dedicated to taking their time as to only serve up the best of the best to their fans. That said, I give 202020 a 10 for enjoyability. Start to finish, I don't consider it hyperbole to call it a tour de force. I give it a 10 for musicianship, from the often impressively technical performances to the diverse and often surprising turns of the songwriting, it's utter perfection. And I give it a 9 for innovation. Lots of tricks here familiar to me, but when compared to other albums this year and considering the unique ways in which they weave it all together, it still stands out for me. So a 9.7 overall and a near-perfect A rating for Torrential Downpour and 202020. A great way to solidify 20 years as a band, do not miss out on one of the best albums of the year. Y'all, thanks as always for watching, and if you enjoyed this album, you might also want to check out my review for the latest from Auto Catalytica. And hey, just stick around in general, because I got plenty more videos coming up, full album reviews, tier lists, roundups, interviews with bands on the podcast. I actually have an interview with Greg, the guitarist from Carbomb, if you want to check that out. So plenty of reasons to, again, subscribe if you have not already. Also in the description, you can find links to our social media where you can follow us, the email newsletter I send out every Friday, MetalTrenches.com, for even more reviews and content, and our Patreon and Subscribestar. If you want to take that extra jump to becoming a full-on supporter, even just a dollar a month gets you access to early content and helps me keep this train a-rolling. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches. <laughs>